Okay, should we make a chili using the GBS wok? I think we should, we've got the ingredients, so it would make sense. Okay. Let's go. Um, so we've got the wok in the, go in the, um, in the Genesis ready to go. Um, Preheated almost at full temperature. You just want to get this thing hot. So this was around about 275. It's going to be over 300 degrees by the time we get um, the food in there. So if you grab the oil, the salt, and the pepper, I'll grab the mince. Sorry, it's all right. Got I've got to it. get quite a few bits it's there. All right. um, if we pop a good drizzle of oil all the way around the top surface. So this is rapeseed oil. It's, you can't use olive oil on this. No, I wouldn't use olive oil. That's fine. I wouldn't use olive oil with. Um, with the barbecue with high heat simply because it's just going to burn so if you season this with some salt and pepper it's important to season the meat when it goes in before it cooks on the outside I and mean before it seals don't be afraid to turn the spoons over either and give the bottom of the wok a good scrape because if anything sticks down there it's just going to ultimately burn um, but if you imagine doing this in a in a wok on the stove or in a big pot on the stove, you wouldn't actually get any kind of caramelization on the meat. No. So just gonna keep this going around. We're gonna brown this off first. It's now, also important to use wooden tool sets, not wooden tool sets for this. This is a tool set that's designed for this this bit of kit. Um, you could put your onions in first. We're gonna we've got some onions, some chili and some garlic. You could put those in first. But the great thing about putting the meat in first is that you get the caramelization on the, on the actual protein. Um, if you were to put the onions and, and what have you in first, you might get a little bit of burnage. So just take the brunt of the heat from the wok with the beef. Keep that moving around. We are going to put the lid down. I know Weber's are all about lid down cooking. We are going to get the lid down in a moment or two. But when you're cooking on a wok, it's just a simple case that you're in using it. So got some good colour on there. You've got a foil drip tray there Ian. If I could get you to just lift that up for me. We're going to take this out. These, um, these spoons make a good little set for lifting things in and out really. So we'll just get that out. You can see how quickly that's already happened. Oops. And the great thing is if you do spill anything, it's not on the hob, it's not on the work surface. It just goes into the bottom of the barbecue and it's, uh, it's not a problem. So that can just stay on your side of the barbecue. Okay. We'll okay. grab this dish over here. This has got two medium onions, um, two chili peppers, and about four cloves of garlic. They're pureed, I just, um, I just used one of the microplane uh, graters. So that's gonna go in. One thing you can't tell, obviously watching the video, is the different sensations of smell that are coming across from this. Yeah, if you were, um, again, if you were doing this in the kitchen, yeah. eyes would be streaming and what have you so just give those all a tumble around in the wok spread them out and we'll put the lid down um, so the wok's in the gbs which is the the disc in the center of the grill that lifts out and you put this round accessory in and the great thing and i think the idea behind the wok is that because you get it lower down it's almost like um it's almost like in the Asian restaurants where they have the wok over the great big yeah. hole with a massive burner coming up underneath and you're getting heat not only in the, in the base of the wok but also in the sides as well. So you can actually spread your food up and, and cook it a little bit quicker that way as well. Um, but it, it really does take no time at all. So we'll just soften these down, make sure that everything's doing its thing nicely. Again, just keep that wok nice and clean. A clean wok is a happy wok. So. There we go, soften that down. If I could grab that little tray, the little plate with the spices and the Liam Perrins, yep. the Worcester sauce. Just gonna make a gap in the bottom of our wok. I don't know if you wanna get a close up on that. But when you're, um, when you're adding your dry spices, you want to add them to the base of the wok. And it's the same as things like tomato puree. You add it to cook it out before you actually mix it with the rest. So here we've got some paprika, We've got chili powder, we've got some cumin powder, we've got some dried oregano, and the last one that's sliding down there waiting to get in is just a little bit of soft brown sugar. That goes in, and before we put the Liam Perrins in, we'll just kind of mix that around on the bottom of the wok, just before we get the other ingredients in. And what that will do is that you can smell, you can smell the cumin, you can smell the oregano and the paprika just really starting to uh, emit then beautiful aromas at the moment. So we've got those toasted off, if you just just go for it, we're gonna go for about three or four tablespoons of Liam Perrins in there. 
That's looking good to me. Then before we put everything, oh, the smell of Liam Perrins. Oh. We used to have steak Canadians as kids with, oh, just take, the food's amazing for taking you back to, um, to other times, but steak Canadians with a little bit of herby garlic butter on a toasted, anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, that goes in, that's all mixed around now. So when we add the mince back in, all those flavors are gonna be all around okay, we're gonna add this the back dish. In now. So you're gonna tip that back in. While you're doing that, I'm just gonna grab two tins of chopped tomatoes. This is, this is a really, you're, you know, you're kind of by the barbecue while you're getting it all prepped. But it's a relatively quick dish. And then, this is yours. That's mine. Don't often get little, little things like this, do you? But little Weber um, bottle opener. And we've got a bottle of stout here. Now, as we're in Cumbria, we've got some Ulverston Cumbrian um, Stringer's Dry Stout, which is just gonna go in. If you pour that around the rim of the wok, not only will you potentially spill a little bit, but you'll just deglaze the top of the wok and just help to loosen any bits that have got stuck on. Ian, if you go down in that bottom left cupboard there, there's a little bar of something. All right, okay. And I just had to put it down in there because otherwise on a day like today it would melt. So if you take about four pieces of that, we're gonna take some dark chocolate and just add that in. And as you can see, this is quite watery. It's quite loose at the moment. It's quite, um, it's quite watery. We're gonna just simmer this away, bring this back up to the boil, simmer it away. So if we pop about, yeah, that'll do. Just pop some pieces in there. They'll just dissolve and, or melt in even. I uh, can just throw them in, in the piece. Okay, so now we're gonna add the beans. And then in if you want to give that a stir. And then we'll bring that back up to the boil. We'll leave it on the high heat, bring it all back up to the boil because the stout was cold, the, tomato, uh, the tomatoes were cold, everything else was cold. So we need to bring that back up to the boil. And then what we'll do, just like on a gas hob, turn it down and just let that simmer. And what we're looking for is to give it about half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, and at the right kind of gentle, moderate heat, it will actually drive off any excess liquid and you'll be left with this nice, sticky, glossy, chili con carne that you could quite easily serve with some rice or you could do with a cornbread or something like that, sour cream, the rest of it. So we'll give that about half an hour, 40 minutes and we'll come back and check that. Okay. All right. So we've had about half an hour. Yep. Let's have a taste, let's have a look. Whoa. So we reduced the heat part way through the bubble and yes. as we can see we've got some nice simmering action going on there. Quite Before we take this out, look at that though. Really thickened up. Nice and thick. Um, the, the, uh, the stout and everything has just given a nice little bit of um, nice bit of depth to that. So I'm going to give you a spoon. Before we take this out we're just going to check it for seasoning just for any, any extra salt and pepper. What do you think? You all right? I'm all right with that. Okay, so am I. Um, let me grab, grab gloves. gloves. I'll grab these spoons. And uh, if you want to bring that over to here, we'll put it on the trivet. I'll grab some serving plates, serving bowls. Cool. The best bit, really. Getting to eat it. So, let's have a little bit of a uh, look at this. You can just see the thick thick sauce. We've, we, you can have this at whatever consistency you like really. Um, if you like your chilies a little bit runnier then just don't simmer it as long. Um, but if we just bring that there. I gave myself a little bit extra so we better do the same haven't we? <laughs> it's only fair. So there you go. Oh okay. Cool. So chili con carne in the wok. Uh, mince, onions, chili, garlic, Spices. That's pretty good. That is lovely. Mm. Recipe on the Hayes website. Yep. Uh, for tips about anything, visit the barbecue shop here at Hayes Garden World or our website, hayesgardenworld.co.uk. All our staff can talk you through what you need to cook dishes like this. Social media as well uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, any questions, just check out the, the channels and also you have the opportunity to come down and see us do demos throughout the year. So enjoy, we're gonna enjoy. And um, yeah, let us know how you get on. Thank you.